Chapter 16, the Gospel of John. These things I have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yes, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. And these things will they do unto you, because they have not known the Father, nor me. But these things have I told you, that when the time shall come, ye may remember that I told you of them. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning, because I was with you. But now I go my way to him that sent me. And none of you seek, at, none of you ask me, whither goest thou? But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow had filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go, go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove, reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin, because they believe not on me of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and ye see me no more of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. I get many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you all things that the Father had are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take mine, and shall show it unto you, a little while, and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, and ye shall see me, because I go to the Father. Then said some of his disciples among themselves, What is this that he said unto us? A little while, and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, and ye shall see me. And because I go to the Father, they said, Therefore, what is this that he said a little while? We cannot tell what he said. Now Jesus knew that they were desirous to ask him and said unto him, Do ye inquire among yourselves of that I said? A little while, and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, and ye shall see me. Verily, verily, I say unto you, that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice, and ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. And, and a woman, when she is in travail, had sorrow, because her hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembered no more the anguish of for joy that a man is born into the world. And ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man take it from you. And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Hither, to have ye asked nothing in my name, ask, and it ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs, but the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. At 
that day ye shall ask in my name, and I say not unto you, that I will pray the Father for you. For the Father himself loveth you, because ye have loved me, and have believed that I came out from God. I came forth from the Father, <clears throat> and am come into the world again. I leave the world and go to the Father. His disciples said unto him, Lo, now speakest thou plainly, and speakest no proverb. Proverb. Now are we sure that thou knowest all things, and needest not that any man should ask thee. By this we believe that thou camest forth from God. Jesus answered them, Do do ye now believe? Behold, the hour cometh, yes, it is now, come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken unto you, that in my me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. John chapter 17 The Prayer of Jesus These words, these words spoke Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come, glorify thy Son that thy Son also may glorify thee, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth, I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thy own self with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thy they were, and thou gavest them me and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou givest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world had hated them, because they are not of the world. Even as I am not of the world, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them 
through thy truth, thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, for, but for them also which shall believe on me, through their word, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in them, uh, I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one, I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and has loved them as thou has loved me. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world had not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me, and I have declared unto them thy name, and where declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. Um, Gospel of John, chapter 18, The Betrayal When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook Cedron, where was a garden into the which he entered, and his disciples, and Judas also which betrayed him, knew the peace, for Jesus often, oft times resorted thither, with his disciples. Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, cometh thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said unto them, I am he, and Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. As soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. Then asked he them again, Whom seek, whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore ye seek me, let these go their way, that he, that the saying might be fulfilled, which he spoke, of them which thou gavest me, have I lost none. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it, and smote the high priest's servant, and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Mal Malchus. Then said Jesus unto Peter, Put up thy sword unto thy sheath. The cup which the, my father had given me, shall I not drink it? Then the band and the captain and officers of the Jews took Jesus and bound him and led him away to Anus first, for he was father-in-law was father to Caiaphas which was the high priest that same year. Now, Caiaphas was he which gave counsel to the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. And Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. That disciple was known unto the high priest, and went in with Jesus into the palace 
of the high priest. But Peter stood at the door without. Then went out that other disciple, which was known unto the high priest, and spoke unto her that kept the door, and brought in Peter. Then said the damsel that kept the door unto Peter, Art not thou also one of this man's disciples? He said, I am not. And the servants and officers stood there, who had made a fire of coals, for it was cold, and they warned themselves, and Peter stood with them and warned himself. The high priest then asked Jesus of his disciples and of his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I spoke openly to the world, and I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple, whither the Jews al al always resort, and in secret have I said nothing. Why ask the domi? Ask them, which he which heard me. What I have said unto them, behold, they know what I said. And when he had thus spoken, one of the officers, which stood by struck, Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Answereth, though the high priest so? And Jesus answered him, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil, but if well, why smitest thou me? Now Annas had sent him bound into Cyphus, the high priest, and Simon Peter stood and warned himself, warmed himself. They said therefore unto him, Art not thou also one of his disciples? He denied it, and said, I am not one of the servants of the high priest. Being his kinsman, whose, whose ear Peter cut off, said, did not I see thee in the garden with him? Peter then denied again, and immediately the cock crew. The trial then led the day Jesus from Cyphus unto the hall of judgment, and it was early, and they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled. But that they might eat the Passover. Pilate then went out unto them and said, What accusation bring ye against this man? They answered and said unto him, If he were not a male factor, we would not have delivered him up unto thee. Then said Pilate unto them, Take ye him and judge him according to your law. The Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death, that the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spoke, signifying what death he should die. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again, and called Jesus, and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew, thy own nation? And the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews? But now is my kingdom not from thence, hence? Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born. For this cause came I into the world that I should bear witness unto the truth. Every one that is of the truth heareth my voice. Pilate said unto him, What is the truth? 
And when he said this, he went out again unto the Jews and said unto them, I find in him no fault at all, but ye have a custom that I should release unto you one at the Passover. Will ye therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? Then cried they all again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. John chapter 19 The Crucifixion Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. And the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they put on him a purple robe and said, Hail, King of the Jews! And they smote him with their hands. Pilate therefore went forth again and said unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you that ye may know that I find no fault in him. Then came Jesus forth, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pilate said unto them, Behold the man! When the chief priests therefore and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said unto them, Take ye him, and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. The Jews answered him, we have a law, and by our law we ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid, and went again into judgment hall, and said unto Jesus, Whence art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then said Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee, and have power to release thee? Jesus answered, Thou couldst have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee had the greater gift, greater sin. And from thenceforth Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh himself a king, speaketh against Caesar. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat, in a place that is called the pavement, but in the Hebrew, Gabbatha, and it was the preparation of the Passover, and about the sixth hour, and he said unto the Jews, Behold your king! But they cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate said unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The t chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then delivered he him, therefore unto them to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led him away. And he, bearing this cross, his cross, went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him, and two other with him on either side, one and Jesus in the midst. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. And the, the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. This title then read many of the Jews. For the place where Jesus was crucified was the nigh to the city, and it was re written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. Then said the chief priest of the Jews to Pilate, Write not the King of the Jews, but that he said, I am the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts. To every soldier is a soldier a part, and also his coat. Now the coat was without seam, woven from the top th throughout. They said therefore among themselves, Let us not 
rend it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled, which said, They parted my remnant among them, and for my vesture they did cast lots. These things therefore the soldiers did. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, he said unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then said he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour that disciple took her unto his own home, after this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled the sponge with vinegar, and put it upon hyssop, and put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head, and gave up the ghost. The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation that the bodies should not remain upon the cross on Sabbath day, for the Sabbath day was a high day, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Then came the soldiers and broke the legs of the first and of the other, which was crucified with them. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they broke not his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forward came there out blood and water. And he that saw it bare record, and his record is true. And he knoweth that he said true, that ye might believe. For these things were done, that the scripture should be fulfilled. A bone of him shall not be broken. And again another scripture said, They shall look on him whom they pierced. And after this Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly of fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him leave. He came therefore and took the body of Jesus. And there came also Nicodemus, which, is, which at the first came to Jesus by night and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pound weight, then took day the body of Jesus and wound it in linen clothes with the spices, as the manner of the Jews is to bury. Now in the place where he was crucified there was a garden, and in the garden a new sculpture, wherein was never man yet laid. There laid thy Jesus therefore because of the Jews, preparation day. For the sceptre was nigh at hand. The Gospel of John, Chapter 20 The Resurrection The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene, early, when it was yet dark, into the sceptre, and seated the stone taken away from the sceptre. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciples, whom Jesus loved, and said unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sceptre, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth and the other disciple, and came to the sceptre. So they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter, and came first to the sceptre, and he stopping down, stooping down, and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, 
yet went he not in. Then cometh Simon Peter following him and went into the sepulchre, and see it the linen clothes lie, and the napkin that was about his head not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also the other disciple, which came first to the sepulchre, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture, that he must rise again from the dead. When then the disciples went away again unto their own home. But Mary stood without at the sepulchre weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre, and see it two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She said unto them, because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing, and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him, Sir, if thou had borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said unto her, Mary. She turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Jesus said unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say, Unto them I sent unto my Father, and your Father, and to my God, and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord, and that he had spoken these things unto her. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear, of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he said, and when he said so, said, he shewed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father had sent me. Even so sent I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto him. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Nick. The Diamas was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto the him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hand the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nail, and thrust my hand into the side, I will not believe. And after eight days again his disciples were within and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Then said he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into the, my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God, Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, and have, and yet have believed. 
And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in his book. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. Gospel of John chapter 21 After these things Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and on this wise to him, he himself. There were together Simon, Peter, and Thomas, called Diamas, Nathan of Cana, in Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter said unto them, I go a fishing. They say unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said unto him, Dom, children, have ye any meat? They answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved said unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girt his father's coat unto him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, but as it were two hundred cubits, dragging the net with fishes. As soon then as they were, come to land. They saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid therein, and bread. Jesus said unto him, them, Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net of land full of great fishes, a hundred and fifty and three. <coughs> and for all there were so many Yet was not the net broken. Jesus said unto them, Come and dine. And none of the disciples thirst ask him, Who art thou? Knowing that it was the Lord, Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and gave it them and fish likewise. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples. After that he was risen from the dead. So when they had dined, Jesus said unto to Simon, Peter, Simon son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He said unto him, Yes, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my lambs, he said to him again, the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, love, love is thou me? He said unto him, Yes, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. He said unto him, And the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, love is thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee? Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, When thou was young, thou girdest thyself and Walk, walkest whither thou wouldest, but 
when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and yet in another shall gird thee, and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. This spoke he, signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said unto him, Follow me. Then Peter, turning about, seeth the disciple, whom Jesus loved following, which also leaned on his breast at supper, and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? Peter, seeing him, said to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Jesus said unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me? Then went this saying abroad among the brethren, that that disciple should not die. Yet Jesus said unto him, He shall not die, but if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? This is the disciple which testified of these things, and wrote these things, and we know that his testimony is true. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which of they should be written every one. I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen.
that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind.
exalted, the King is exalted on high, and I will praise Him. He is exalted forever, exalted, and I will praise His name. The King is exalted on high, and I will praise Him. He is exalted forever, exalted, and I will praise Him. Exalted, the King is exalted on high.
of men Oh, you rescue the souls of men Counselor, comforter, keeper
Jesus Look full in His wonderful face And the things of earth will grow strangely dim In the light of His glory
calling, calling for you and for me. See on the portals, he's waiting and watching, watching for you and for me. Sure. 
born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story.
mine, my strength, my song This cornerstone, this solid ground Firm through the fiercest drought and storm What heights of love, what depths of fears When fears are stilled, when striving cease My comforter, my all in all Here in the love of Christ I stand This gift of love and righteousness Scorned by the ones He came to save Till on the cross says Jesus died The wrath of God was satisfied For every sin on Him was laid Here in the death of Christ Body laid, light of the world by darkness slain, then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again, and as he stands in victory, sin's curse is lost its grip on me, for I am Life's first cry to final breath Jesus commands my destiny No power of hell, no scheme of man Can ever block me from His hand Till He returns or calls me home Here in the power of Christ
songs give place to sighing When hope within me dies I draw the closer to him From care he sets me free His eye is on the sparrow And I know he watches And I sing because I'm free For his eye is on the sparrow And I know he watches me In shady green pastures So rich and Like a river. 
river attendeth my way when sorrows like sea billows roll whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say it is well it is That Christ has regarded my helpless estate and hath shed his own blood for my soul. My sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trump shall resound, and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well with my soul. It is well.
their minds Guarding our hearts and minds So come my soul, now take your rest Find your peace in Jesus Christ 
found a sweet haven of sunshine at last in Jesus abiding above his dear arms around me are lovingly clasped how sweetly he dealt his love the danger the tempest forever is or my anchor is holding I'm safe forevermore what gladness what rapture is mine the waters receding the danger is past I'm feeling so happy I'm anchored at last I'm anchored in love divine He saw me in danger and lovingly came to pilot my stormy young soul. Sweet peace he is offered and blessed his dear name. The billows no longer roll. The danger, the tempest forever is o'er. My anchor is holding, I'm safe forevermore. What gladness, what rapture is mine The waters receding, the danger is past I'm feeling so happy, I'm anchored at last I'm anchored in love divine His love shall control me through life and through death How sweetly I'll trust till the end I'll praise Him each hour and my last dying breath Shall sing of my soul's best friend The danger, the tempest forever is o'er My anchor is holding, I'm safe forevermore What gladness, what rapture is mine The waters receding, the danger is past I'm feeling so happy, I'm anchored at last I'm anchored in love divine I'm anchored in love divine